don't worry be able to listen to watch the presentations so so there was a, I, I made a correction last time because when I illustrated the the memory supposedly the virtual memory different addresses were displayed right the main idea is that Linux nowadays provide what you call address space lay, uh, uh, address space layout randomization or in it makes it difficult for attackers to predict where in memory the processes will run so that they will let me easily attack. Okay? So that's basically the idea. So for today, we're going to continue about uh, the process abstraction. So you can think of the process abstraction as uh, similar to ComSci 22. You have uh, a concept and then, you, imp for example, you have an object, you have properties of the object, the behavior of the object, you implement them using variables and uh, methods like that so that's the way also the the process are created and instructions data section program counter stack pointer are all examples of properties of a process so when you implement them you have to be able to identify what they are right so we also discussed last time about the api right so an operating system must provide an application programming interface in order to uh, Kumbaga, related sa, ano, related sa uh, processes. So, thinking about ComSci 22, uh, this API here are basically the methods associated with creating the process. You get the idea? So, these things are the uh, properties of the object, and this one here are the uh, methods of the uh, object. So, the, our abstraction is process. So, create process, or actually it's fork, discuss later then we have uh, wait kill uh, exec so those are things that are associated with uh, the process API right so API is app application programming in per inter uh, interface okay so we also talked about last time how processes are created right so I mentioned I always mentioned that for a program to be for the set of instructions that contains a process or program must be in the main memory. So it has to be loaded into the main memory. And to do that, it is the there is a part of the operating system that reads the executable and then load it in memory and jumps to the first instruction. I showed it last time when I talked about GDB. Right? right? So there's also the runtime stack which contains the local variables, parameters, and return addresses, etc. So uh, the heap is created uh, only the heap section is actually created only when uh, the program uh, dynamic dynamically allocates memory using functions like malloc and free malloc and free are not system calls right? so please take note of that malloc and free are not system calls they are part of a library for allocating memory on the heap specific memory region all right and uh, as I said it set up, uh, sets up addition uh, in the quiz set up additional or basically uh, three file descriptors which are uh, integer type right input output and error and then the program will now transfer control to the first instruction which is the main function I've shown this in the debug example when you create a branch to the main and then we press R, it stops on the main. It's the starting point, right? So that's the entry point of the program. So this is how it's done, right? So you have the executable on the disk, on the file system, the shell, that slash P4, for example, loads it into memory and then performs all the stuff and then uh, transfer control to the particular operating system. If that process, uh, that instruction, if that process is selected for execution by the scheduler okay now a process can be in several states it does not mean that when you type dash slash uh, hello automatically it will be executed okay it's it's not the case it's possible that that particular process will have to wait for a while and that's why uh, a process has what you call different process states so it can move from one state to another. Actually, a process state is nothing more than a variable. I will show you the examples later 
on the process abstraction on the actual source code in an operating system, how they are implemented. Okay, but for now, let's talk about this state. So a process is in the running state if it is loaded into the processor. Okay? So it's in the running state. It is in the ready state when it is ready to run, but for some reason, the operating system has chosen not to run it at this given moment. So remember about uh, virtualization of the CPU, time sharing. So if the process is ready, but there is still a process running on the CPU, then it cannot execute on the CPU. So it has to wait for a while. So it's basically called in, in the ready state. It's ready to execute. Okay. Then the black state is, is when a process has performed some kind of operation. However, uh, since uh, the operation is not yet finished, in particular IO operation, then the status of the process is blocked. Meaning, uh, it is not executing in the CPU, it is not ready, it is waiting for some event to complete before it can proceed to the, uh, to the state that it needs to be, like the ready state running. So, before going to running, it has to go first to be in the ready state. The process has to be in the ready state first. All right, you get the idea? So in a way, you can represent this as a state transition diagram, right? So arrow something. So this is a state transition diagram. So at the rightmost, you have the ready state, right? So when, when the scheduler selects a particular process to run on the CPU, that is, okay, so you see here the schedule, then it is the, the state is changed into a running state. When that process is removed from the CPU and is doing, uh, is just doing something else, not necessarily I.O., it goes back to the ready state. Let's say this will happen, let's say, if the, if the policy of the scheduler is round robin, let's say after five seconds of execution, a process has to be removed from the CPU to make way for another process, then it will be descheduled, but it will still be in the ready state. However, if the process, let's say, opens a file, right, then that operation takes some time. Right? So it will not go to the ready state. Instead, it will go to the black state, meaning it's waiting for an event, let's say, IO completion event to finish, and then only when it is finished, it will be uh, set, the st its state will be set to the ready state. You get the idea? So, whenever you do I.O., you go to the block first, and then after the completion of the I.O., you go to the ready state, and then the scheduler will probably schedule you later. So, it is important to remember that the scheduler, which is part of the kernel of the operating system, will only select processes which are in the ready state. Right? So, there is actually a queue for uh, black processes waiting for an I.O. device. Remember, for example, you're reading a disk, right? There are data structures, basically link lists, that uh, use the processes waiting for the completion of I.O. event, right? So, in a way, if you have the disk here, if there are several processes that are reading files on the disk, they have to queue. Right? For example, this process will be in black state because it is waiting for the completion of the I.O. Once it's done, it will be removed from the queue and then it will be added to the ready queue okay, of the process, of the process list, the pet the operating system. And then this one will be the next process to read from the disk. And once completed, it will be removed from the black state, it will go to the ready state, and then be scheduled by the point okay, You get the idea? So that's what we mean by that. So essentially, the operating system maintains these uh, data structures right, to be able to manage these things. Right? So uh, basically, that's why you need uh, background in COMSI 123 is linked list. Most of the implementation, most of the data structures used in, in the operating system kernel are uh, linked list, basically, list. So what are those lists? We have the uh, first one, the ready process list, meaning it is a list 
of processes that are in the ready state. So I told you a while ago, okay? So this is a list of blocked processes. Okay? There's also a separate list for ready processes and there's actually a, a pointer, this one here, a pointer to the current running process. Okay? And there is also a register context. Okay? The register context is basically the state, the contents of the registers which represent the state of the computation of the process. Okay? And the second uh, data structure is called the re uh, so it's the, regis the register context. Okay? So uh, the abstraction, the process is the abstraction. When you implement them, they are usually called PCD, okay? process control block. So this one here is, a, is, a, is treated as a process control block. This is a process control block. So you can think of this, if, you have, if, you, if you've implemented linked list before, you have structures that defines each node in the linked list, right? So each node basically is treated as a process control block in the linked list. Okay, you get the idea? So it's a C structure that contains information about the process. But to give you an example, this one is the uh, re register context okay, for the X V6 kernel. Okay. So you see here that it contains the state of the, uh, the contents of the register, which represent the state of the computation of the process. So halimbawa, nandiyan yung EIP. This is a 32-bit operating system, so EIP is the pointer to the next instruction to be executed the program counter, right? Then the stack pointer and other registers that represents the context of the process, right? And then in XV6, you have the different states. So kanina, I only mentioned about uh, ready, right? So you have here ready, running, and block. But it depends on the operating system. Running is equivalent to this running state. So it's basically an enum. Okay? When you say an enum, is, have you used enum uh, type in your C program? Okay? So basically, it's just, it just maps to integer. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? So uh, enumeration type. Okay? So runnable is basically the ready state. Okay? So uh, this is the idea. Okay? And this one is the uh, contents of the, this one, this process list here. Okay? Uh, uh, not process, but rather the higher level process control block. So what are the fields that are, you can think of this as a class okay, in Java. Okay? So this is the process control block that describes the particular process. So we said, I said last time that a process will have a memory. Okay, which contains the instruction in the data. So basically, you need to have a pointer for that. Okay? Uh, you also have the size of the memory, uh, pointer to the kernel stack. Th this variable here, this field here, represents the state of the process. Each process is an operating system has a process ID. Uh, and we we'll learn later about the parent process, how processes are created okay, from a parent process. And this one is, uh, I think it's a channel, okay, uh, for receiving uh, mes messages, okay. Uh, killed, okay. Uh, this one here is a pointer to the list of open, open files maintained by the process. So initially three files, but this one it can have other files, okay. Uh, inode, which points to the current directory, and then the context, okay. Okay, so remember here this context. Okay, it is a field in the structure in the process control block, and this one. Okay, so this is the end. Is that all? Okay, so let's uh, look at the. Uh, let Let's see if I missed something. Okay, so okay, so let's just have an example uh, how these things work. So. Okay, so this is the uh, the source code for this this 
this uh, code is uh, written by uh, a lab from MIT. So I just made a copy here. And let's see if this will build in this uh, setup. So it's the actual operating system that is actually being mentioned in the, the source. Okay. Uh, CD. So it's a clone of, it's a re-implementation of Unix uh, version 6, which is uh, an old version of Linux, but uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, it's a good example. So you can see here the source tree, which actually no, fo no, no folders, no other folders. All of these are the source code for the operating system. So let's look at the make file. Okay. So this is the make file. It's quite complicated, but basically you have the target and you have this object files to be created. So uh, this is the image, this image here, uh, this one here that will be created. So let's try to run this first if this really works. Okay. So we run the make. So notice that okay, it builds the no, it builds the executable, uh, the the image, uh, the object files, the executables, and then it creates a disk okay, that contains the image. So after the build, uh, okay, you see here a lot of object files, okay, and uh, to test if the system is working, we can type uh, make uh, QMU. So QMU is a so I said it's an emulator okay, for different machines. So it has different targets. So if you want to be able to debug the kernel using GD, you can use it. But we just want to use it at the front end. So we press this one. So you now see that, what do you see here? This is the actual operating system which has booted. Okay? So let's say it says here. Uh, so there are two processors here shown here, uh, CPU 1 and CPU 0, and uh, some properties of the file system. Type L, uh, LS, example. So it outputs the uh, files in this system. So you get the idea. So from the source code, we were able to build a working operating system. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so uh, this is an example of source code. Okay. Now let's try the ICSOS. So ICSOS is what your this one is just for illustration, but your project will be uh, for ICSOS. So uh, okay, so uh, make uh, it does not build on 18.04, but I use a Docker container to build it. But I already uh, have the uh, disk here. Okay. So this is the bootloader, ICS operating system, then press enter. This is what's good. So we've been using this since 2017. And this is the boot process, how the ICS OS boots. Okay. So uh, you have some output uh, that displays the characteristics. For example, it loads the CD-ROM, okay, the VGA driver, okay. and then the file system, and then it gi gives you a prompt. Okay? And then if you want to view the list of processes, you get the list of processes here. Okay? So this is ICSO, ICS, oh, it's an example of an operating system. Okay? Now, let's look first at the source code of, uh, of XB6. Okay? So, uh, so if you took, okay, so let's so the, the process abstraction in XV6 is implemented in proc.h, actually the data structures. Okay? So if you look at that, so this is what you're going to see. Okay? So uh, this is an old version of, uh, of XV6, but it works, right? You've seen it from the source code to the build to the execution, you've seen it, so it works. So the context, basically, of the uh, XB6 OS is this one. So these are actually just 
variables or fields in the structure that represents the state of the computation. So uh, the stack uh, base pointer and basically the important thing here is the instruction pointer because it stores the state. Diba, uh, the processor will remove, uh, we might interrupt a process that is executing. So it's possible that that process will be removed from the memory. So it has to save where in the process, where, where uh, where in the execute, where in the program, uh, the process was uh, removed from the CPU, okay? and then you have the process here. Okay, so that's is that clear? Okay, so in the in the case of ICS OS, it is part of the kernel, and there is a folder uh, called process, okay, and uh, process dot h, okay. So it has a more uh, complicated. Uh, set up okay so uh, the process state okay is stored in this context uh, in this uh, in this structure with the structure f save regs okay and then the actual process control block is this one here okay pcb386 which contains a lot of information regarding the process so a uh, common to both the XV6 at ICS OS is the process ID, okay, which represents the process. Okay, is that clear? So you also have the working directory or the current directory. Uh, uh, you, you, you'll be able to study this later in the lab, but this is how you abstract the concept of a running process. That's just what I would like to emphasize in this discussion. Okay, so. Are we done with the? Uh, okay. So there is no slide here, but during this, uh, there's there's no slide for uh, process uh, swapping. Okay, process states, but uh, to illustrate uh, the process state mechanism, the transition, kung paano na transition yung isang process from one state to another. So, uh, in the book, you have a uh, table there, the same time, and you have uh, a process, P0 and uh, P1. Right? So, the time progression is, let's say, 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so, initially, for example, the operating system uh, selected process zero to run. Okay? So, this one is running. At time one, nagraran pa siya. At time two, nagraran pa siya. And then, at time three, nagraran pa siya. Okay? So, after some time, so, since isa lang yung CPU mo, run, 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 so, ibig sabihin, CP1, tinayot mo na siya ba? Pwede siya execute uh, ready siya, okay? So, at time 2, ready pa rin siya. At time 3, ready pa rin siya. Now, at time 4, for example, okay, si P0 tried to read data from the disk. Okay? So, nag-read siya ng data from uh, from the disk. So, ano na lang yung mag state niya? Tatlo lang yung state ka din na, diba? So, re ready running sa kablock. So, nag-read siya ng disk, I.O. Ano yung state niya? Block. Okay. So habang hindi pa tapos yung ano, hindi pa tapos yung block, ah, hindi pa tapos yung read, block siya. Now, ang mangyayari, si scheduler, marirealize niya, oh, si P0, block pa siya. Maybe, we can now let P1 run. So at time 4, we enable uh, P1 to run. Okay. Now, at time 5, hindi pa rin tapos. So, we allow that. Black pa rin siya, and then we allow P1 to continue running. And then at time 6, uh, the process is still blocked, okay? then we still allow P1 to run. Okay? Now, at time 7, at time 7, tapos na yung I.O. Okay? Ano na ngayon yung magiging state niya, ano, ni P0? Running na ba agad siya? Hindi pa. Pag si set muna siya sa ready. Okay. Ngayon, kung ready na siya, pwede actually piliin agad siya ni, ano, ni, 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 
is carrier or the OS pero dito nandit running pa rin yung ano running pa rin yung isa okay and then at time 8 halimbawa nang decide si scheduler na kahit ready na to uh, i-allow niya pa rin na mag-run yung isa si P1 okay lang yon okay and then eventually halimbawa ang para ang nangyari sabi ni scheduler di ba ready dito si P0 si P1 dito running nakita ni scheduler Teka, isang instruction na lang. Matatapos na rin naman si P1. Instead, although ready na siya, pwede mo na siyang i-run dito. Hintayin na lang matapos to kasi matapos na rin naman siya. Last instruction na yan eh. ba? Diba? So, ang nangyayari, this will just be allowed to finish, kaya ready pa rin siya, and then you have the running. So, ito yung parang progression ng, ano, ng process execution. You get the idea? Okay? So, That is basically what we mean by the schedule. So, yung decision, kung ano yung, at this point kasi, this is the turning point eh. Sa time 8, pwede nang mag-decide yung scheduler or yung operating system na i-allow nyo na si P0 mag-run. Pero, since yung policy niya, halimbawa, is to allow na malapit yung, allow, i-allow mo na yung process na malapit na matapos to completion. Kaya, at time 8, pinatapos na siya and then sakala ngayon nag-proceed si ano, CP0. Okay, yun idea. So that's what we mean by uh, by ano, by by that. Okay? Now, if you are working on a Linux system and you are uh, interested in some of the commands, are there questions about this? None? So, uh, about processes, kasi remember that If you're going to uh, to study processes, you need some tools to be able to uh, uh, manage process. So I maintain this uh, site, this basically a list of commands that allows me to manipulate commands. So. Uh, In a typical uh, operate Linux operating system, okay, we have tools to be able to uh, manage processes. Okay? So, if you have a multiprocessor system, okay, for example, you would like to know on which uh, processor is Firefox running. Okay? So, Firefox is a process. So, uh, you can use the basic command ps uh, minus a grep Firefox. Is the web browser okay? So this is the Firefox process. Okay, it has the process ID here, and we are in the terminal and the time it is running. Okay, so if you want to know which processor, kasi meron tayong four cores dito, okay? You can actually check kung saan nagrara na processor core yung Firefox. So notice na in this example, okay, Firefox is at this point is running in processor 3, sometimes it's running in processor 0. You get the idea? So that's one of the ro uh, roles of the operating system, managing uh, scheduling these uh, processes and you will see that it is not actually fixed to a particular processor. You get the idea? And uh, what if you are interested to determine uh, which processes are running on a given core? Okay. So let's say I want to know what are the processes running in core 1 or core 1 as shown here. So this is an environment variable, shell variable. Okay. So you can see here that this at that point in time when the command was executed, These are the processes with this process ID running on this particular core. So if you want to look at core 3, because there are four cores here, so there are three, uh, uh, two processes running, uh, uh, these are the processes running, a lot of processes running on core 3. You get the idea? So that's one of the role of the operating system. Uh, okay. 
Now, what if you're interested in knowing what are the open files that are being used by uh, a process? Diba sabi natin, kailangan mo gusto mo rin makita ano yung mga open files. So, we can have the lsof command. Let's say, uh, let's look at this terminal. So, this terminal is has the process ID. This is a shell. This is the process ID. And if I want to... Uh, determine the files being used by this uh, terminal, open files. So you have file descriptors. So these are the files being used by this bash shell. So you see here the different uh, programs. These are regular files. Basically, these are open, meaning uh, if, in, if you took comsci131 with me, these are the shared libraries being used by this particular uh, bash process. Okay? You have the idea? So you have here the file descriptor, the type, okay, etc. So you can use that lsof command. Okay, is that clear? So there are a lot of other information that you can obtain from a process. So you can just use it, uh, you can just uh, study the uh, ps command okay, to be able to do that. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about threads later. Okay? But we can also uh, look at the command PS3. Okay? So let's say PS3. Okay? P uh, processes are actually created uh, in a hierarchical manner, which we'll discuss in the next chapter. Okay? So we have the system D here as the parent process. Traditionally, you have the init process if you have system 5 initialization, system V initialization, but nowadays, yung init system and that changed na sa system D. So you see here the root process system D. Okay? But from these processes, you see here a lot of uh, additional processes being created from a parent process. Okay? So with that, let's move on to the next... Uh, part of this virtualization uh, topic, which is the process API. So I mentioned a while ago the importance of the API. So it's somehow the methods to create and manipulate processes. So we have the process API. It's very important, it's very interesting to note how to understand how this API works. Right? So <clears throat> as I said, when you create a process from the command prompt, uh, the OS create the process, that slash some program loaded into memory and then executed. And uh, in, Lin in Linux or Unix systems, we have the fork system call to do that. Okay? Have you heard? Have you tried this fork system call? Okay? So this is basically quite an interesting system call because it seems like you are actually uh, running two programs. Okay? But Actually, you are running two programs, but in, in just one command, command line in the shell. So to illustrate this, uh, this is the, the code, and this is the output. Okay? So we have the code of this here. Oh, I think this is... CPU, okay, CPU API. So make cut P1. So this is the code for that. Okay. So let's examine the code. Uh, STDIO, STD Live, and Uni STD. What is this Uni STD? This is called the Unix standard. Okay. So where is that located? VI uh, user. Uh, SRC uh, maybe user include yeah so so user slash usr slash include uni std so ano yung mga laman niya okay so this is part of the ganusi library and one of the interest so po6 is an example is an example of uh, the po6 api okay po6 api so the POSIX API is 
uh, is the API where most of the system calls, the description of the system calls for Unix type operating systems are based. Okay? So nandito yon. And for example, yung file descriptor na ano, uh, std out. Natin. Okay? So as you can see here in Unix std, this is the place where the constants for the file descriptors like std and in out are defined. Okay? So 0, 1, 2. Okay? So std and 0, out i1, and std r i2. Okay? So when we run this program, yung p1, okay? this is what happens. Okay? So the hello world has uh, the process ID 9519. Okay? And then the hello, I am a parent of uh, uh, 9520. Okay? And then one, this is the child of the process. So, uh, medyo tricky to kasi uh, if you look at this code. Okay? So, the fork system call actually is a function that returns twice. Okay? You get the idea? It's the only function that returns twice. Normally, a C function returns one only. Right? But this one, it returns twice. One in the parent process and one in the child process. So let's look at the code. So you see here first, you have hello world PID, which displays the this process. Okay? Parang you have this function, get PID. This is part of the API. Remember, uh, dun sa ano natin, sa slide natin. Uh, part of the slides are this miscellaneous control. Okay? So, uh, it also includes like this one, get PID. So, ibig sabihin, sa program mo, habang nagraran siya, pwede mo actually kunin yung kanyang process ID. So, this is what was the output of the previous command. Okay? So, this one, ito yung output. Okay? Hello world and then press ID. Then, nag-fork ka. Okay? This is the fork system call. which create a new process. What happens is that first, it checks if the return value is less than zero. Pag nag-fork, nag -ne pag less than negative yan, ibig sabihin yan, ano, uh, ibig sabihin yan, nag-fail yung pag-create ng process. Ano yung mga scenarios na mag-fail yung pag-create ng process? Halimbawa, pwedeng pag wala ka ng memory or na-reach na yung limit ng number of processes. Okay? You can actually limit, set a limit on the number of processes running on the system. Or, uh, nawalan ka na ng memory. You can actually what, try what you call a fork bump. Okay? What it does is you have an infinite loop and then, what you only do is fork, call fork several times. Okay? And if the system is not configured to protect from a fork bump, the system will freeze basically because you run out of memory and you simply create a lot of process. So the fork bump. Okay? So, uh, this will fail. Okay? And then, else, if the return code is zero, it creates a child process, right? So, pag zero siya, pag, ang, pag, ne, pag, pag zero yung na-return ng fork, ibig sabihin niyan ang nagraran yung child process. So, you see here, uh, I am child, okay? And then, else, okay, it will return actually to RC the uh, yung value ng RC sa parent will basically be the process of process ID of the child process that was created. You get the idea? So, pag tinignan nyo kung code na to, kung, kung wala kayong idea ng fork, parang ang ID, um, magdata kayo, bakit yung dalawang, diba? bakit yung dalawang condition nag-hold true? Diba? Traditionally, when you program para isang case lang dapat yan, di ba? Okay? So, bakit yung parang dalawang condition yung trinit niya? Okay? 
So that's basically the somehow the tricky part of the uh, for uh, system call. Na nasun nakita niyo ba yung difference? Parang normally sa if statements, ano lang yan, uh, isa lang dyan ang nalipili, di ba? Pero dito, dalawa yung, dalawa yung nag-return. Okay? So that is uh, uh, quite an interesting effect. Okay? Now, if we try to run this example, okay? so you will notice that uh, sino na po naman ang nag-return? Si parent o yung child? Sa runs, sa runs natin, ako na yung parent. Pero walang guarantee na si parent yung unang mag-return niyan. Pwede in some future runs, pwede si child yung maunang mag-return. Because of this. Okay? Because of the scheduling. Pwede ito si parent, pwede ito si child. Okay? You get the idea? So, ito example lang to. Kasi di, pwede. You can iterate several times. Okay? You can use a for loop. And then, makita mo, misan, mauuna yung parent. Ah, yung child na mag-return. Okay? Now, if you want to know the return value, uh, okay, the exit code is zero. Ibig sabihin, successful yung, ano, yung return value ng previous command. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, okay yun. Okay? Uh, nasusundan niyo ba yung description natin? So, that is the fork system call. Okay? And actually, shown here, Ah, uh, yeah, but pinakita pala dito nung magkaiba sila. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> Now, itong scenario na to na mag mag, mag, mag uh, hindi predictable, non-deterministic yung kanilang execution can be alleviated. Okay? Can be resolved by actually, okay? By actually uh allowing the parent to wait for the child process to die. Okay? Okay. Uh, ang illustration kasi natin dyan, uh, the, way we, the way we run this command, okay? so pag nag-PS ka, meron kang shell process dyan, di ba? In this example, the shell process is 7, 4, 8, 6. When we run this command, when we run this P1 command, ang nangyari dyan, okay, si, si Shell, nag-create siya ng child process na ang, pang, ang process number ay uh, 9580. Okay? And then, sa loob nito, nag-fork siya ang lumabas na process ID ay 9581. Okay, you get the no, you get the mechanism. Okay. So, ito yung shell mo, which is bash. This is actually P4. This is actually P4. Okay? You get the idea? Mas makita niyo yan pag nag ano kayo, pag pag GDDB natin to next meeting. Makita natin ngayon na kung uh, Ano yung itsura nito when it comes to processes? Okay. You get the idea? So, I hope you try some of the codes and it's available no, online naman. But we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue next meeting. Sir, uh, yes, you have a question. Yung sa PID, kapag ka nag-fork, palagi bang magkasunod? Kunyari niya, 9580, kasi yung child niya, lagi 9580. It depends. Kung may ibang nag May iba pang nagraran, pwedeng maunahan siyang ano, maunahan siyang ma-assign na ng process ID number. Usually the PID is not uh, reused, okay? May parang global counter yan ng process. Notice the difference here. Yung parent process niya ay 7486. Merong iba pa na gumamit ng ano ng process ID number kaya ang naibigay sa kanya ay 9581. Pero since ito was forked within, tapos wala namang ibang nagraran, yan. Magkasunod siya. Pero pwedeng masingitan yan. May nagrarang pa iba dito. Pwedeng 9580, 9581, 9582 na. Okay? So, yeah. That, that will be all. Okay. So, see you next meeting. Please submit your paper. Uh,